Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? You know, Kyle, this is this is what podcast brain does to you sometimes. Well, well first off, Jared. Yeah. We're starting off the episode great. Let's let's show our lovely faces here. Oh, am I am I not showing camera in the podcast studio? I am not. There Here we, we go. are. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, the all right, you Kyle, you to, you to, you totally you threw me off my intro. You were correct too, but you still did it, and I'm gonna blame you. Anyway, podcast brain. I have podcast brain, Kyle. Because as I'm watching Clemson fall to Duke for what is uh, in, in our current reality uh, last night. Um, I was thinking to myself. First, I was happy. Like first item number one, I was happy and I was overjoyed. But item number two was we're about to release a collegiate chaos episode tomorrow that Makes no reference to this whatsoever. As is uh, tradition, we, we're always always post an episode and then something big comes out. Big announcement. I also said boom. that LSU's loss wasn't going to hurt. I, I did, We didn't know who was going to lose at the time. And I, and I said, oh, man, uh, you know, but the game's close. Uh, surely it's not going to hurt either team no matter who loses this and then florida state totally took over that football game um once again making me look dumb as you know as what? is tradition you know what we live and learn jared we live and yeah. learn well, and that's live. exactly was exactly what this ohio state offense will be doing they, Aha, they live they live another game here they they beat Indiana, moving on to week two here against the Youngstown State, the Youngstown yeah. State Penguins, which would be the first FCS team that Ohio State has played since 2010. And I'm going to take a wild guess and say that was also the Penguins. That was also the Penguins. Okay, so when was the last time we played an FCS school that wasn't the Penguins? I'm not going to look it up, Jared, because we are going to be talking you about Ryan Day. to sneeze. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Ryan Day presser here. Uh, to note, to no one's surprise, Jared. Yeah. Kyle McCord will be starting again in week two against Youngstown State. Shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Shocked. Not really. It's almost like we told y'all all off season. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. Listen to your all friends. Right. All right, so a lot of questions, a lot of a lot of things from Ryan Day here. Some I'm going to pick apart some of the things that was posted by the goat Tony Goodman over at Buckeye Huddle here. Uh, so some takeaways here. So just quick answers here, Jared, or quick comments about what Ryan Day said here. Uh, he says offensive line needs to play better. Duh. Duh. <laughs> I, I, uh, if if you go and watch our. Uh, Scarlet and grade episode by far the lowest graded unit on our on mm -hmm. our review. Yeah. And he said the running game was only 50 percent efficient on first and second down. Uh, if, they would, only 50 per, if, if they were only 50 percent efficient first and second down, I hate to see what they were third and fourth down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, on clock rules, take a, taking away possessions. You have to make sure you're more efficient and execute better on each drive. He told the team that during the game, it is what it is, but it makes the execution more important than ever. But Kyle, how will I know what insurance to buy? There are so many choices for my auto insurance. Whoever has the funniest commercials... Gets my auto insurance dollars. Too many that's, commercials. That's 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 the real battle on Saturday. Yes. All right. Um. More about the offense. I think we uh, coach day continues on. I think we have an idea of what our identity will be on offense. 
But at the same time, every year is different. They want to look at different things and see where they go. They learn some things on Saturday, which will, t which will take them down some different paths. Having many different groupings gives them information for the future use, but you still have to execute. They don't execute. They can't call this place. Yep. I just, I, as I was saying on Monday, the Indiana game was not about the, was not about Indiana. Never was, never was mm -hmm. intended to be. And, and it's this next point here where he says they can't rely on the pass in the short yardage all the time. Yeah. At some point you have to draw a line and say, you're going to get the yards. Yeah. He's... And they didn't. And they didn't last Saturday. No. But uh, it, you you don't learn that mentality without doing. It is a learned mentality. Um, when asked, um, when do you want your quarterback to start taking shots downfield? Uh, they, he says that they called a few, but those of those, but they didn't connect. He had some connected. You probably call more. It all starts with execution. The more they work and the more they play and the more they'll call. There was a deep one to Fleming that didn't quite connect. There was uh, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s uh, out of bounds, which connected everywhere but the playbook or the scorecard, rather. Uh, the, the, the one to Stover was fairly deep. Uh, but that was also over the middle. They'll they'll dial those in. They'll dial those in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we talked about on the show about nobody predicted or even thought that Indiana was going to run the triple option. Ryan Day did respond to that, saying, "Anytime you face an offensive scheme you weren't expecting and shut them down, that always that's always a good feeling and a credit to the preparation and the players." Yeah. To all of a sudden face a triple option and execute as well as they did. And for the most part, they did like the fullback dive gashed him a couple times. Uh, there may have been a bad angle or two on the outside a couple of times, but again, like you don't, you don't face the triple option more than once every couple of years, unless Georgia tech's always on your schedule or Navy's always on your schedule. So yeah, they, they did a good job. Uh, let's see. He, uh, meaning Ryan Day, definitely had some wrong assumptions about what would happen in week one. And he says that happens every year. Uh, and we, and we, we see, we've seen it a few times, like two years ago against Minnesota. It, it was a lot closer and could have been could have been a loss for the Buckeyes in week one. If a uh, certain running back didn't get hurt in that game. Potentially. Um, Potentially, but, yeah. It's. Yeah, I mean, that defense was bad. Um, that defense was very bad. Um, and, you know, despite what everyone wants to try and tell you. See, a shroud was not great in that game. I statistically he had. A, a bunch of touchdowns, I know, but um, he had bad accuracy issues. Um, Kyle caught a ton of flack for pointing out that CJ Stroud was uh, not very good in his first three or four games at Ohio State. People only want to hear what they want to hear. The, the rosy reception that people have is amazing. People were calling for his job immediately just the way they're doing with Kyle McCord now. And we, I mean, we just repeat these cycles every couple years and I mean, everyone fellas, pretends like we don't repeat these cycles every couple years. I mean, fellas and gals, it's, we could, Ohio State's not Clemson. Ohio State's <laughs> not LSU. Like yeah. they didn't get blown out in their games. It's just chill. It's just chill. We got a couple of weeks to to work to work on what needs to be fixed here, figure out what's working well and build from that. Just and also don't plain, show plain Notre simple. Dame anything. Mm, yeah. All right. Um, last one's here. Uh, he said, John Carter is expected Zach, to play. 
is expected to play. Uh, he needs to have a good week of practice. Uh, also mentioned that X didn't play much last week because of some personnel grouping <laughs> they were using. Also, the decrease in possessions takes some snaps away from a lot of guys. But Kyle, the insurance. But the insurance. And the and, um, and the crackers. Like, how do I know who's the cheesiest? All right, and the last one here, and we'll get into uh, our... Kyle, uh, who's the, the cheesiest? I don't know. I don't watch those. Com I don't watch commercials. <laughs> um, last one here. How short of a leash was Kyle McCord on with changing the plays or the reads? It says Great they question. have plays that are full field progressions. Overall, it was mm. pretty well done, but they don't have everything in the office that they had CJ Stroud last year. But, Jared, they didn't have that for Stroud two years ago either. Hmm. It takes, it takes time. Shocking. They have, to, they have to give him time to throw, too. Wow, it's almost like everything we said on Monday. Yes. All right, that is it, Jared. So it is time for the meat of our, meat of our episode, and that is Know Your Enemy, the Youngstown State Trestle vest. I mean, penguins. Trestle vest. The trestle vested penguins. The trestle tuxedos. Ah, the Youngstown State I, trestle I see, tuxedos. I, I see what you. I see what you did there, Jared. It's a three piece. <laughs> All right, Youngstown State. Like I mentioned before, first time that Ohio State played an FCS team, which was Youngstown State for in two thousand and ten here. And it's it's always tough trying to talk about an FCS t team, and well, really, this is the first time we've talked about an FCS team, Jared, on 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 this podcast here that Ohio State's faced. Like, so like that's what, a factual point. We we weren't doing the podcast in 2010. Like, I what what are we to expect from from this uh, in this game? What what's to expect here, and what's what's the expectations? I mean, so it's an FCS school, um, and, and I'm just, you diehards know this, but for some of the casuals, one of the first things you need to know about an FCS school is they have 20 less scholarships. It's 20, right? Or is it 30? I suddenly doubted myself. I don't know. Let's look. Um, the point is they have less scholarship players. Uh, it's either 65 or 55 compared to Ohio State's 85 scholarship players. Secondly, like. Yep, you're, you're right. 22, 22 less. So they 22 are allowed less. maximum 63 total scholarships. There you go. There you go. <laughs> going to be the going first to be, going, shutout in five years, Zach says. Has it been that uh, long? It's been a long time, Jerry. It's, it's not been, been a long time, uh, but, but here's, that, that, that's the camp. But I, I do think shutouts on the table here for what it's worth. I think shutouts on the table. Um, but, well, well, let's let's look at what Youngstown State did in their first week. Granite. Yes, there was another week FCS team that they played in week one, but they put up 52 points and only let up 10. So for us to just sit here and say, Oh, FCS school, Jared, and it's, it's, it's going to be a FCS shit. school. It, it's going to going to shut them out here. I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to like lie and act like I'm some FCS expert. I'm not. I don't know what Youngstown State's goals, realistic goals are for the season. Um, I think that they lose three games last year, I believe. Um, but here, here's the thing. Youngstown State returns uh, nine offensive starters on the off. Or, yeah, nine, nine offensive starters and eight defensive starters. It's a lot of talent coming back. This is a very is. old team. Which if you're FCS, and you don't necessarily have a ton of talent. When the talent you have is mature, that's a huge advantage. 
So you are seeing that with, Young, with Youngstown State this year. This is a uh, very senior team. This is a team returning a lot of snaps. Um, they did lose one of the best players they've ever had uh, to the Denver Broncos last year, a uh, running back whose name escapes me. Um, but they return a lot of talent. Um, you have Bryce Oliver at wide receiver might be the best wide receiver in all of FCS. I think he's a guy who is going to come into this Ohio state game motivated. Um, he, he sees this as his opportunity to get some film against NFL talent to get a invite to some training camps, maybe even the combine like Bryce Oliver's walking into this game with, uh, thank you, Kyle. Um, he's the, oh, he, he made the roster. Is that what active means? Did he make the 53? That's what it looked like. Good for him. Jalen, uh, McLaughlin is who we're talking about. Uh, he, Youngstown state running back, uh, who is, I, I, I it looks like he's on the 53 man roster. So he uh, earned a spot as one of the team's three running backs. There you go. Made the roster, but he's not. He's, but the point is, he's not in Youngstown State anymore. But if you're Bryce Oliver, you see a path to the NFL. And getting some film against Ohio State might be the make or break to, you know, maybe getting a combine invite or maybe getting a senior bowl invite. Maybe, you know. Getting to the next step that can maybe get you to the next step, right? And he, he's going to be playing outside of his mind on this game. And I, I think you also have uh, Dylan Woodkey, um, whose name I might be mispronouncing because Sloopcast. Um, Dylan Woodkey is a talented defensive end uh, who, again, might be looking at Ohio State with some potential deficiencies at the offensive tackle position. It, it might be seeing this as an opportunity to get some good film against a, you know, pro factory college football team to maybe get that invite to all the things I just said. Right. Um, they have Chris Fitzgerald, a defensive tackle, who is also uh, pretty good. Um, and, and Jason Williams, who's an offensive lineman, who's pretty good. But the point is, is that this is a very senior Youngstown state team. Ohio state's going to win this football game. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm gassing up Youngstown state a bit right now. I am. I'm gassing up Youngstown state. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a good podcast host, I guess. I'm trying to gas up the enemy a bit here. Got it. Got it. Um, Got to, got to give credit to those Ohio teams, right? Sure. Um, the talent's not here. Straight up, the talent's not here. They do have talented players on this team. Uh, I think Woodkey and Oliver are both very talented players who, much like uh, Jalen McCullen, who made the 53 at, at the Broncos, these guys have NFL aspirations and they will be playing with their hair on fire during this football game. Um, again, they return nine starters on offense, um, a offense that scored 28 and a half points per game last year. Um, they have a senior quarterback in Mitch Davidson. Uh, he had a pretty decent year last year. Uh, completion percentage, not exactly where you want it to be, uh, but he only throws one interception. He throws 12 touchdowns and he runs for four more touchdowns. Maybe not a high efficiency guy, um, but takes care of the football. I already talked yeah, about. That, no, sorry, I think that's the big I think that's the big thing here is that he, he takes care of the football and he gets the ball into his uh to his wide receivers, which his um, main threat from last year is back again, uh, Bryce Oliver, who had 10 touchdowns last year, 800, over 800 receiving yards as well. He had, what was it in last week's game? Five catches for 65 yards. So an okay game from him last week, but expect expect uh, Mitch Davidson to try to give 
get the ball to Bryce a little more in this game. And opposite uh, Bryce Oliver at the wide receiver position, position is Max Tomzak. And for those of you who, who are as old as I am, yes, Mike mm-hmm. is his uncle. Yes. <laughs> um, Mike, ha- uh, yeah, excuse me, Max had 26 catches for 430 yards and two touchdowns last season. Uh, he was not a starter, I don't believe, last year. Um, tight end, they got Jake, I'm going to go Bino, uh, who's mostly a blocker. And along the offensive line, they are returning four starters. Uh, Jason Williams, I already mentioned, 6'4", 300 pounds. Ryan Johnson, 6'4", 315. David Metzler, 6'5", 310. And Aiden Parker are your four returning offensive linemen. Uh, Parker at 6'2", 300. Big offensive line. This, this is at some good size coming off the bus. Okay, Jared, I may be wrong here. Um, I thought Ohio State played Youngstown State in 2010, and I'm I'm mistaken. No, the, the last time that they played Youngstown State was in 2008 and 2007, which were the only two years that they played Youngstown State. So 2008, not 2010. I forgive you, Kyle. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, Youngstown State has eight returning starters uh, from a team that allowed 25 uh, and a half points per game last year. Already talked about all conference David Woodkey, um, who had 43 tackles, 12 tackles for a loss, and five sacks last year. Uh, I already mentioned Chris Fitzgerald, a defensive tackle, who uh, had six tackles for a loss and two sacks last year. You also have uh, Anthony Johnson and Devin Lee uh, uh, along the interior of the defensive line uh, who have a combined returning 11 starts. Uh, Another uh, pretty notable, pretty experienced player for Youngstown State is Greg Benton Jr., uh, a very experienced linebacker for this football team. Uh, Started all 11 games in 2012, uh, totaling 36 tackles. And Kyle, uh, they have some pretty, uh, pretty decent defensive backs, in- including a, uh, including a recognizable name. And who's that, Jared? Well, I was trying to kick it over to you because I was tired of talking. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at this. It's uh, <laughs> it's Marcus Hooker. Yeah, Marcus Hooker here. <laughs> Marcus Hooker, uh, who uh, started five games for them last year. Um, returns to this team cornerback Jordan Trowler uh, Trow, Trowers I wanted to throw an L in there Jordan Trowers uh, and safety Quinson Lenton um, both uh, return after leading Youngstown State with 51 tackles each last year I will say this um, it's not necessarily a great sign when your corner and your safety are your leading tacklers. It's not, it's not necessarily a good sign. I'll, 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 I'll say that. Um, additional starter f- at the, in the defensive backfield is Troy. Ah, I should have just let this one go. I think. <laughs> Jackubic. Troy Jackubic. Sure. I tried to find a Young Sound State media guide. Guys, I tried. I I am over two on media guides. Why well, I, I did I did find Indiana's media guide, but you know what? It didn't have a pronunciation guide in the media guide. Even then you'd still you still pronounce it wrong, Jared. Admit it. I'd have the phonetic spelling in front of me. I'd have the phonetic. It would it would help out a lot, Kyle. It would it would honestly help out a lot. Yeah. All right. So that's that's Youngstown State here. A, a lot of a lot of veterans in this team here, which I think they'll, I think, I think they'll be able to get some yardage, maybe some points in 
in um in the in the second half here when when Ohio State second and third stringers are in here, but not nothing nothing Buckeye fans should worry about here. So let's let's go ahead and jump right into our our uh, our picks here, Jared. So we'll we'll start off with Ohio State player to watch for this game. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh. Don't call me Jimmy Simmons. Uh, I just I need to see better play out of the uh, left tackle position. Uh, he looked uh, lost and confused at times um, last week. And again, Woodkey's not a bad defensive end. I assume that uh, he'll be going up against Woodkey a lot in this game. And he... You know, I, I think if Josh Simmons has a good game, people will go, well, it was just Youngstown State. Woodkey is not a bad player. Woodkey is not a bad football player. So if he has a good game this week, we, we take that as a positive sign. Yep, yep. Man, I a lot, lot, lot of talk about Sonny Styles, and I almost want to put him as my player to watch. Uh, who was it? There was somebody, maybe, maybe it was, I don't know if it was Tony or if it was um, somebody else on Buckeye Huddle or Tom, but somebody posted like a image of where Sony Styles started at um at each snap on the oh, defense. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like all over the place. All over the field. Yeah, you know, in, in this game, I'm I'll go with um, I think I'll go with the hot hand here in the running backs. I'll go with uh, with Chip Trainum here for the okay. high state player to watch. Uh, he, he 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 looked really great in the in the opener for Ohio State here. Big running back, and Ryan Day called him. He said he's like a fullback. I know he's not a fullback. He's just a big running back, but he does all the things. He's he can ca- he can run, block, and catch. So, uh, for you fullback fans out here, we'll, we'll go with Chip Trainum. Yeah. The fullback, not a fullback. Chip Chop and Chief? Mm, Chip almost. Chop and Champ? Oh, maybe. Chip Chop and... Listen, we have to get this three-person nickname going. I, I don't I I I kind of like Chief because he because he is running back one like he's in charge. All right, you you think about it. You think about it. We'll do the enemy player to watch here, and uh, <laughs> I'll go. With, I'll go with Mitch Davidson. It's got to start with the quarterback here. When, um. Yeah, it's got to be the quarterback here in this game. If if Youngstown State's wanting to get any kind of points, he's got to he's got to be able to get rid of the ball quickly because you know that the defensive line and ends are going to come after him quickly here. Because the other person I was going to pick is Jared's player to watch. You could have taken him. I had a backup in case you wanted That's to fine. steal Bryce That's... Oliver, wide receiver. I do think he's like he's the most. If you, if you. Asked me, Jared, who on this team um, is most capable of making a 53-man roster on the in the NFL? I I would probably say Bryce Oliver. Uh, so with that and that alone, I'm gonna go with Bryce Oliver uh, as the Youngstown State player to watch. All right, all right, key matchup, Jared. What do you have for? This game's key matchup to watch out for. I already kind of mentioned it. Uh, Josh Simmons versus Dylan Woodkey. Um, again, I'm assuming that they'll end up facing each other a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very concerned about the offensive line. I'm very, very concerned about the offensive tackles. This is not a total pushover competition for Josh Simmons. Uh, Dylan Woodkey is a very capable defensive end. I think it'll be a good test. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm going to go the the next layer there. You got the you got the offensive line and the defensive line. I'm going to go with the blitzing linebackers being picked up by the running backs here. They have two 
they have two uh, uh, linebackers who are veterans here at Youngstown State. And in last week's game, Alex Howard had two sacks. Greg Benton had a sack in, in that game, too. So look for both of those linebackers to try to get some pressure on Kyle McCord here. And it's going to be uh, Chip Chop and, I guess, Champ is what Jared's wanting to to say I, I, here to, I put, to pick up I, those block uh pick up those blitzes i i said chief or chief okay <laughs> all right and the spread jared are you picking the spread here for ohio state uh, about that uh this game is off the board this game is off the board what would you what would you put the the line at the spread it's 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 off the board, Kyle. I know. I'm just asking that a probably question. that probably means it got up into the mid 40s because I think at a certain point they just don't do it. Uh, I I don't know where the cutoff is, and I don't know what the decision is to just say we're not putting it on the board. But at, at a certain point, the number just gets too high, and they just don't. Was there one last year for, yeah, there was one last year. Arkansas State was 44 and a half. So more than that. <laughs> oh, Arkansas State. Yeah. Did you see what Oklahoma did to them? Yeah. That was mean. That was too that far, was man. Mean. That was too that far. That was mean. Who, who else? There was another team Oregon. that went too far. Yeah, Oregon, Oregon went too far last year or last week. Was it? Didn't they play in FCS? Was it like Portland State or something too? That's mean. Y'all got to be nice. Yeah, they played Portland State. Yeah, Portland State Vikings. Too far, guys. Too far. Uh, so yeah, That's no right. spread pick this week. Um, hey, Kyle, is do we have an over under for this, or is that also off the board? Uh, let's look. Maybe let's we'll switch look. it up and we'll do an over under instead. All right. All right. Give me a second here because I got to find it. Just buying some time. Here we go. And I do not see one. Okay. Also off the board. Uh, winner pick Ohio State. Kyle. Duh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the final score prediction, Kyle, what do you have? I have Ohio State. I have Ohio State uh, 62, Youngstown State 7. Keeping with tradition. I'm, gonna, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go straight for it and say 69 nothing. All right. Can we get some nices in chat? Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Uh, we will now go into our favorite Austin in our Discord and his over <laughs> and unders for this game. Our favorite Austin. Our favorite Austin, yes. All right, so... Do we have any other Austins? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. If they are, they're closeted Austins. He's only All known right. Austin in the Discord. Over, over, under, on Devin Brown, passes attempted. Ooh, ooh I like this concept. Ten and a half. I'm going to go under. I, I think Ryan Day is bound and determined to establish a run game uh we're gonna see we're gonna see ohio state run the ball a lot in this game i agree i agree so i'm gonna go under heck, heck even if you say half that at five and a half i still may take the under That's her though. Uh, speaking of almost five and a half, Marvin Harrison catches four and a half. I'm gonna That's, go over. I'm gonna go, go over, over on that one. I'm gonna go over too. That just that feels too low. I feel like five is just too doable for him. All right. Uh, true freshman touchdowns at point five. I'm gonna go over. I I feel that uh, we saw we saw some splashes from a. Uh, from Tate? Yeah. Um, 
last week. Um, he had one catch. Yeah, he had a catch for 17, 15 yards. I feel, I feel, I feel Tate may may get that touchdown here. So I'll, I'll go over on on a true it's, freshman getting a touchdown. It's, it's it's an FCS school. Like you get one of those guys in a little bit of space, and they make one right move, and it it's just Jover at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the chances of it happening are a little too high. I will take the over. Okay. All right. Ohio State rushing yards at 234 and a half. Over. Over. Is days, days going to pave a road right down the middle of the horseshoe this week. <laughs> yeah, over. Uh, Tyshawn King yards. So Tyshawn King is the running back who had 11 rushes for 111 yards and two touchdowns in last week's uh, victory. And he has yards for Tyshawn King, 66 and a half yards. It's an interesting number. On one hand, that's what? A third of the yards that Indiana got last week, approximately, Mm -hmm. um, which feels doable. Uh, the Youngstown State offensive line's big and they're experienced. Some grown ass men on that Youngstown State offensive line. Um, but I don't know that I don't know if King's really meant to be the first like I don't know if he's meant to be like the dedicated number one back. I know we saw that last week, but I don't know if that's expected to continue. I'm going to go under. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm going to go under as well. Uh, I like I like to, I like the line, but I'm going to go under. It's a good line. It's a good line. Youngstown State, Young Sta- Young's Town State there you trips go. to the red zone or 21 plus yard touchdowns set at one and a half. So getting into the red zone, simply getting into the red zone or 21 plus yard touchdowns at one and a half. I'm going to go under just because of my prediction. That, that is all, Jared. I have, I have no other reason just because of my prediction. It's just junk time, man. Junk time's what's making me hesitate here. I know. I know. Um, I'll, I'll go under. We can't be any worse than uh, how Clemson did in the red zone. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure Clemson. I'm sure Clemson just fumbled another ball in the listen, red zone. Listen, had they not built their university on a plantation that was gifted to them by a slave owner who fought for the Confederacy, maybe that wouldn't have happened to them. Maybe, but we'll never know. Uh, we'll last one here. Last one here from Austin's over unders. Cornerback pass breakups or interceptions. That three and a half. I'll go over on this one. That's, I'll go over. I, I hope to see quite a few pass breakups and an interception would be really nice too. But Should are we assuming that he means Ohio by Ohio State? I'm, I'm going to assume yes. I'm going to okay. assume that. So in last week's game against Indiana, Ohio State had four pass breakups. There you go. Uh, yeah, and I feel like Youngstown State, weirdly enough, might throw the ball more than Indiana did. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Maybe. All right, um, and we got a few Ask Sloopcast questions. I see in our in our uh, chat here, we got Devin Brown in the chat, Jared. Oh, wow. Look at that. Hi, Devin Brown. Not, that's not just Zach in disguise, is it? No, no, it's not Zach in disguise. <laughs> uh, he says, will we get an Ennis sighting versus Youngstown State fighting trestles? Yes. Um, I want to say yes. Probably. I would say probably. Except Phyllis put me in. 
Well, Devin, but yeah, Devin Brown will will be in. Yeah, you I, might I get a driver too, or three, depending on how things go. Maybe. And uh, Odin's Creation has a question here: over under for snaps CJ Hicks gets Saturday at eight and a half. Over. It's just, there's going to be so much they're 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 gonna it's youngstown state i feel like they're going to no. keep the guys as fresh as possible and this isn't even necessarily about like throwing the backups in early it's also just like hey it's gonna be hot and it's youngstown state so yeah. you you just like you'll see you'll see more player rotation just generally yeah, I, I guess i guess it is snaps so sure i'll, I'll go i'll say over for that one as well yeah yeah all right all right um so those are all the questions here unless um z spikes or uh or zach has any other any other questions while um while we wrap things up here yeah if you got if you guys want to throw in any last second questions go ahead and do that um just want to remind everyone uh you can both listen to the podcast and watch the podcast. And in fact, you can watch the podcast on two different uh, YouTube channels. We are both on our own independent YouTube channel and we are on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel. So you can watch us either, either or. I doesn't bother me, honestly, either way. Uh, both, yeah. And, and just like, here's what you do. You hit play at the same time. You take the stereo on one of them, you move it all the way to the left. You take the stereo on the other one, you move it all the way to the right so that Kyle comes out of one of the sources and I come out of the other source. Now, do I actually record this in stereo to make that work? No, I don't. But if you tried it, that's your fault. What was that? What was I doing there, Kyle? I don't know. You're trying to buy time, but we are we are up on time though, Jared. Okay. And you can you, you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, honestly, no, I don't. I I do love what uh, what we saw last night when us recording last night two nights ago for those watching um watching us on um, on Wednesday here with uh duke and clemson that was yes exactly love seeing clemsoning return okay kyle things that may or may not be back texas clemsoning is back texas usc florida state and clemsoning right now the only one i'm buying stock in for sure is clemsoning I, don't know, I was impressed with Florida State. I, I, I well, we don't a, know, I but we don't know, but we we don't actually. We we think we know LSU is good, but we don't actually. It's just it's week one shit. We don't yeah. actually. We don't actually know. Like maybe both of these teams are overhyped because it's just week one. Who knows? We don't have data points. We don't have enough data points. But we do have data points with with a Clemson who have lost three of their last four games, Jerry. Hey, can we just think, can we just put Duke in the Big Ten now? I, I feel like they earned it. Yeah. <laughs> let's just put Duke it. in the Big Ten now. I, I, mean, I feel I mean, like and it's a, and it's a new rivalry, an in conference rivalry, Duke and Northwestern. Yeah, but we're all I mean we're also bringing the Tar Heels too. Just just so we're clear. We're also bringing the Tar Heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jared. All right. Probably nope, the Cavaliers. The real question is, can we get Florida State? Ooh. That's the real question. I don't think so. I, I still think they're SEC bound. But a year ago, I wouldn't even entertain it as a possibility. And now I'm at least entertaining it as a possibility. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, tonight's ending music, Kyle. Uh, will be brought to you by the Heartless Bastards. The Heartless Bastards uh, will be ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Heartless Bastards. Mm -hmm.